going to do a simple exercise where we re read in some data to R and we uh, produce a couple of plots and we do a little bit of looking at some data. So I'm going to use the same data that we uh, played with in uh, a fish and fisheries class the other day. Uh, so I'll open up the Excel spreadsheet, the logistics exercise one. I'd, now R won't recognize all of these things that are going on here. It just it needs really simple formats of uh, data. So I'm just going to take these data across. That's the second exercise. Control C. I make a new file. File uh, new. Uh, Control V. And then I'll give the t the columns of data simple titles. So we'll have year. We'll have effort. And we'll have yield. Call me anything you want, but th th those make sense because that's what those data columns are. Uh, R um, rec recognizes a data object. This is called a. This would be called a data frame, and then each of the columns in R would be referred to as a vector. But you can just think about it as a spreadsheet with columns in it. That's probably easier. Um, if we had uh, a data point in there where we knew what the uh, yield had been but we didn't have the effort values, then rather than asterisks, which you might use in some programs, some stats programs, R uses NA. So NA means that the data are missing. That means that when you plot, so if you plot year against yield in R, it will do that and it will use all of the data points. If you plot year against effort in R, then it will um, only plot the ones for which there are complete data. If you didn't have that NA in there, then you'd have columns of different length, and sometimes R doesn't like that. So uh, it's best to make sure that if you've got missing data points, especially at the bottom of columns, if you've got an, an NA in there. Right, so save that as a CSV file. File. Oh, just um, another point. Um, you've got to make sure it starts on the first line, okay? Make sure it starts on the first line. Make sure that your data is your columns are named in lowercase because R recognizes the difference between uppercase and lowercase. So if I um, called this column year with an uppercase, that would be different to year in a lower uh, using lowercase. And R um, will say there's an error if you try to do something and you've not named the vector or column correctly. It won't tell you what you've done wrong, it'll just say there's something wrong. And it can sometimes take ages to work out that all you've done is you've used an uppercase instead of a lowercase letter somewhere. Um, other things, keep the names of your, your columns short and keep them simple because you might have to type them quite a few times. So if you call something year that we went fishing or something, that's a, that's a, it, R will recognize that as a column title, but that means an awful lot of typing. So keep it simple, keep it straightforward. So file, save as, uh, I'll save it to the desktop. I need to save it as a CSV file. Now, there's a few different types of CSV file, um, but the one that we want to use is this one here, CSV, comma, delimited. So, and I'll call it fish, just to keep it simple. And I'll save it to my desktop. Okay, i close that down. I don't really need this either, get rid of that. Now I can open up R. So R, when you open R up, you get this big grey area and you get this uh, console screen here. Now as we did in class the other day, I'm going to open up, a make a new script. Okay. Now this is a file, the tech, just a simple text file that you can save when you've finished. And then you can reopen that again at a later date. And you can, um, uh, you can edit it and you can reuse it and you can use it, you know, and you can use it to remind yourself what you've been doing when you've been doing a particular statistical technique. So I'm going to give a little name. Um, R exercise 1 um, reading in data and doing a simple plot. Okay, so something to notice there, there's a hashtag at the beginning of that line. If you put a hashtag at the beginning of the line, um, R will recognize that as just being a comment. In fact, you can put a hashtag anywhere on a line and it will recognize that as being a comment. So um, if I want to get this, com if this was a command and I wanted to, to get it to jump across onto the command screen, the console, you put, you make sure that the cursor is on that line, anywhere on that line, actually, it's going to be anywhere, and you do control R and it jumps across. And you can see that R doesn't do anything in response to that. It just, it just 
prints it on the on the console screen. However, if I if I did something like um, plot right without anything else on there, and a plot's actually a command in R, so I don't know what it'll do here. But if I do Control R, it's it doesn't like it. Right, because it doesn't make any sense. If I put doggy, Control R doesn't recognize it, or it's looking for an object, but it's not uh, it's not finding it. Okay, so it's giving you some sort of clues that you're doing something wrong, but it's not really telling you. In it, it uses geek speak. Okay, so what do we want to do? We want to read a data file into R. Uh, so we want to read that f that CSV file that we've just created. So we need to give the data object a name. You can call it anything you want. I could call it fish. I'm just going to call it crab just to demonstrate that you can call it whatever you want. Uh, I keep the names quite short. You notice it's all lowercase again, um, and I want, I'm telling it that it needs to read a CSV file. Um, there are a couple other things you can read in. You can read in Excel files, SPSS, Minitab files, um, and tab delimited files. There's quite a few. Uh, I tend to use comma separated files just because it always works and it's always simple. Um, now, if I was a geek, I could put here, I could put C colon forward slash Magnus forward slash desktop forward slash fish or something like that and it would just go and get that file for me but um, I can never remember where I've left my files and some and, and I have files all over the place so I'm going to use this and I suggest you do every time right it just makes life simple it's quite a simple command and you you'll do this command again and again and again I'm sure so what I'm saying is read a CSV file I don't know where it is I'm gonna to have to look for it and I want to call it crab so I've got the cursor on here, so I'll tell you what we can do, actually, we can put a note in here, uh, and R won't mind, because we've put a hashtag in front of it, read in a CSV file, and call it crab, okay, control R, so now, um, it's copy that command over, uh, onto the console window, it's opened a dialog window for me, and here's, here's the file I want, fish, so I open that, and you can see it doesn't actually tell you it's done anything, which is annoying. So let's have a look at crab. So if I type crab in now, it gives me this data object. Okay, so here we've got uh, crab. Now we might want to know a little bit about that data object. Just imagine for a minute it's got a hundred columns or something and lots and lots of data. You, you, if you just typed crab in, you would just get a stream of numbers and you wouldn't be able to tell anything about what was going on in your data file. So let's we can do things like names in crab. R. That tells me the names of the columns. We can do head crab. And that just gives the first two, four, six um, uh, variables in each of the columns. Notice there's, a, there's another column here. This is the index column that can be used sometimes for, for things. It's not named, but it's, um, it's, it can be useful. Um, or we could do str uh, crab. That's quite a useful one because that tells you uh, something about your data frame. So it says there's 13 observations of three variables and it tells you what the three variables are. So there's year, effort and yield and it tells you that they're integers. That's quite handy as well. So the other one that we could use is something called summary. Right, so summary brackets crab. And this is quite useful because it tells you a bit more about your data. So it tells you the minimum, maximum, median, mean, third quartile, first quartile for each of the columns. The other thing it tells you, which is quite useful, is it tells you how many missing data points there are in any one of the columns. It's saying that there's a missing data point in effort. That's the one that we put in. Right, so what should we do? Let's do a simple plot. Um, um, the command for a simple plot is uh, plot and then let's do, let's do brackets, we'll do now the y-axis is the thing that has to go first, so we'll do effort by uh, year okay, now if I try this it doesn't work, right, it doesn't work because R needs to know which effort column and year column you're referring to, now you might have a couple of data objects and you might have one called fish in and one called crab in um, so what we'll do is we'll tell it it's crab dollar effort and crab dollar year 
Now, this can be quite useful because sometimes you might have two data series in there uh, that are related and you might want to plot a column in one data series against a plot column in another data series. So say I had another data series in here called um, fish. I could plot the effort from crab against the uh, the years from fish. Okay, uh, But just keep it like this. So if I do a plot now, control R, there we go, we get a simple plot of um, year along the bottom and effort is the y-axis. Okay, Now that's a bit boring, isn't it? So let's see if we can make it look a bit prettier. What do we want to do? Let's do um, let's, let's do the x and y axis first. So x lab x label equals um, we want that to be year comma and then y lab equals uh, we'll call it effort. Well, I can tell it give it a bit more detail. That speech mark there. Okay, so now I can just run that again. Have a quick look. So, so I can. That's quite handy. So I can just have a quick look and see how that's that's going. Now, this command's going to end up being quite long. So, I'm going to break it down a bit. Put a comma in, and then a new line. And I want to change some of the thing features of the graph. So I want to change the the points that represent data points. So that's sub command for that is pch equals and then if you google our data points or something or google our uh, pch you can get a list of all the different characters that are commonly used you can actually put anything in you want but there's some commonly used ones so i'm going to use one it's number 16 okay let's have a quick look at that uh, oh right ah here's another point okay so i need to in order to make our work if you've broken it down into two lines, you've got to make sure that the cursor is on the first line first. It can be anywhere on that line, right? Uh, so put the cursor on the first line, Control R. Still hasn't replotted it yet, okay? And you'll notice that here, in fact, let's just demonstrate that properly. So it, you'll notice that here there's a there's a plus instead of the the, the uh, arrow here, and that's basically R saying I'm waiting, okay? So it's waiting for another command. So I do Control R now, and it'll redo the plot. So just to show you that again. So if I if I just do it on the second line, it says something missing. It doesn't quite understand. So I put the cursor on the first line. I do Control R, and then it says I'm waiting. And you'll notice the cursor has jumped onto the second line as well. And I do Control R again, and we get a a graph. Uh, like that. Right. What else can we do? Let's just do. We can do color. Call equals red uh, we can do size so size is uh, going to make that a 3 ok, let's see what that looks like so, you, so you, like this you can gradually build your graph up uh, and sort of change things as you go along and make it look exactly as you want to do one of the great things about R is it's completely flexible there's so just a load of different things you can do uh, we can do type as well if I use uh, type equals O it'll put lines between the points um, I can change the line uh, characters by doing LWD equals 3 I'll make it nice and thick okay and I can do LTY equals 4 no, I don't know what that'll look like but it'll be like a right, so it's a dotted line okay so there we have a nice simple graph. There are lots and lots of um, uh, things that you can do to to make your graphs look really pretty in R. Once you've done your graph, you can save as. So you've got to make sure that's the active window that you've got open. You can save it as any one of these things, and it gives you some options there as well. Um, you can also save your uh, text file. File, save as, and then you can save that somewhere and come back to it later on and carry on working. And you know you should have put uh, when you've been working on it it's a good it's good practice to put um, notes in so you know names gives you the names of the columns and vectors head gives you first five variables uh, str tells me something about the variables oops and yes, remember summary 
they don't, well, we can, I can just do it again. I can show you, and there's what summary does. Right, so you can see. That'll do for now.